Okay, so the countdown is finally on. I will be home on July 14th. Super excited. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. But what I am not looking forward to is answering the same questions over and over and over and over again. So, number one, can I speak Chinese? Dwayne, will I speak Chinese to you? Boya. Oh, yeah. Question number two. What's question number two? What's China like? China is interesting. So what happened? She said when you moved her back, she said that if you do it again, she'll kick you in the lung. <laughs> yeah. So anatomically correct. Question number two. Can I use chopsticks? Dangran. I don't know if I'm just biased now because I've been here for a year, but I think they're they're better than like forks and spoons and stuff. Unless you're drinking soup. Yeah, I would have. Question number three. What are the roads like in China? Pretty freaking insane. Now this is like surprisingly calm for China. I haven't driven an actual car in just about a year now. And the reason is because I don't have a car. Second reason, driving in China is just nuts. I don't even know if they have any rules. Question number four. What's the food like? Spicy. I honestly think the biggest difference between food in China and food back home is just like the variety. Back home, you have a million chain restaurants like McDonald's and A&W and Subway. And here, they do have McDonald's and they do have Subway, but they also have like literally millions of little little food stands everywhere. Most of them are run just by like random families who make you dishes and they make them their own way almost. Every family has a secret recipe. A lot of the times you can get same dish of food from two different stands a block apart. The food will actually taste completely different. <laughs> Some adapt better than others. It's not all chicken feet though. I mean, you don't have to go far to find like civilized food and civilized coffee. Question five. Are you going back to China? Yes. We've just finished up our first year of language here in Wuhan. Next year, I come back for my actual degree, or at least I'm supposed to. I don't actually know which city I'm gonna be at next year because right now I'm working on seeing if I can change my degree and change the city that I have to go to. So I'm not quite 100% sure of where I'll be, but I know that I'm coming back. So July 15th, I fly back to Canada and then I'm there for the entire summer to go camping and just chilling in the sun with air that you can't see. Today's actually like really clear. The fact you can see those buildings way at the back there is like one out of every friggin 50 fortune cookies. Question number six. What's the Chinese culture like? This is the epitome of the culture. A lot of China is super, super Western almost. You know, they have huge shopping malls, huge like districts like this where it's just McDonald's and Prada and Haagen-Dazs. Side note, Haagen-Dazs in China is ridiculously expensive. Uh, the thing about modern China, like you don't even need to know Chinese to live here, honestly. It does help a lot. Yeah, I mean, it totally helps. Anytime you speak Chinese in China, just as a foreigner, like even if your accent is terrible and what you say doesn't make sense, People will be like, oh my god, oh, your Chinese is amazing, oh, it's so cool. We definitely get really like preferential treatment here just because of how we look. I mean, as much as I'm all for equality and stuff, it feels really nice to be first in line and 30% hotter to everyone who sees me. Question number seven, are you taller, Zach? Not at all. But I'm cuter. Question number eight. Have you eaten dog yet? <laughs> With a sarcastic smile as if who would eat dog? Yes, I have. When we were in Xi'an, we were walking with some friends we'd made at the hostel we were staying at, and we walked by this like cart. There was this really drunk Chinese guy who had this little tiny stand. And we walked by and our friends asked what he was selling because we can read Chinese and they hadn't studied it yet. And this guy was selling like dog meat. So we ran back over and we started talking to him. Pulled back this little red cover. Two dead dogs just sitting 
in this man's cart. But he gave us some. He snipped off, I don't know what part of the dog he cut off. I don't really wanna know. He cut off like a little bit of dog meat. Gave it to us as a sample. It was actually, it was good. I liked it. I don't know if he seasoned it with something, but it was like lean. And yeah, it, it was also raw. <laughs> Question number nine. What is your favorite memory? Um, I don't know. There's been a lot of really random, like, cool things that have happened here. I can't really think of one specific moment that tops everything. It's a good thing, I think. Like, there's so many little things that have happened along the way. I'm never gonna forget this first year, for sure. Are we getting turned? Of course. Okay, <laughs> Question 10. Uh, my favorite color is orange. I don't know why. I had a dream when I was little. There's been a lot of things that have happened this year. I have a ton of stories that I'm really excited to tell everybody. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time this summer. Oh, please be open. So yeah, that is the top 10 questions, give or take, a lot. I'll see you soon. I want to hop on for a ride. <laughs> I don't know what her husband would say.